Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Chunky Monkey Cupcakes. That's right, we are frosting some muffins and calling them cupcakes. Since as far as I can tell, that is the only real difference between those two things. But anyway, I will double check that with one of my attorneys later. But in the meantime, what I do know for sure is that banana, chocolate, and walnut are one of the all-time great combinations, which is why these cupcakes are such a crowd pleaser. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the least exciting step. And that would be mixing up our dry ingredients, which will contain some all-purpose flour, into which we will mix some baking powder, baking soda, and some salt. And then once everything's in there, we'll go ahead and take a whisk and give this a mix for about a minute. At which point we'll simply set this aside and move on to the star of the show, bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S, bananas. And we really do want to use ripe ones here, with that skin starting to turn black. And since these are almost never sold in this condition, if you want to make these cupcakes today, you're going to want to buy these bananas last week. And what we're going to do is go ahead and peel three of them. And we will add them to this bowl and toss in a couple tablespoons of milk, along with a touch of real pure vanilla extract. And then all we need to do is take a potato masher and smash these until we have a fairly smooth and relatively unsightly puree. And by the way, I add it because I always have, but I'm not exactly sure how much difference that little bit of milk makes. So if you have some, add it in. But I'm not sure I'd run to the store to get those two tablespoons. But anyway, we'll go ahead and mash our bananas until our bananas are mashed. And hopefully looking a little something like this. At which point we'll set that aside, and we will move on to making the actual batter. Which is going to start with one stick of room temp butter, to which we will add a little sprinkling of white sugar, and then we will grab a nice big spatula and mix all this together, or as we call it in the business, cream our sugar and butter together. And if your butter is nice and soft, this will only take you about two or three minutes, but if your butter is still cold and firm, this will take you like 20 minutes. So the point is, do not use cold, firm butter. And then what we'll do once that's been smashed and smeared into a beautiful, light, creamy paste is clean off our spatula and switch to a whisk, and then whisk in two eggs, one at a time. Okay, when we're mixing eggs into a butter-based mixture, if we add too much at once, it can break. In other words, separate into a bunch of particles. But if we add one at a time, and make sure it's incorporated before adding the next, we usually won't have that problem. Having said that, one of these days I'm going to make this recipe by just adding every single ingredient into a bowl at once, and then just mix everything in one step to see how much differently it comes out. But anyway, we'll go ahead and whisk in two eggs as shown, at which point we can go ahead and add our banana puree, which as you can see is oxidized a little bit and kind of turned brown. But that's not a problem, so everybody relax. And then what we'll do after giving that a quick whisk is toss in whatever we're going to use to make these monkeys chunky, which in my case is going to be a whole bunch of walnuts and chocolate. And please note, I'm using chocolate chunks, not chocolate chips, because these are called chunky monkey cupcakes not chippy monkey cupcakes. But of course, if you want to use regular chocolate chips, or even mini chocolate chips, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Ben and Jerry of how this will vary. But personally, I really do like the larger pieces of chocolate in this. And that's it. Our last stop will be to mix in our dry ingredients, which we will do with a spatula. And we will only do that until our flour disappears. All right, the more you work a batter that contains flour, the tougher it can be. Although having said that, this is such a moist batter that you'd really, really have to overwork it. But in general, using best practices, we only want to mix things until they're mixed. Otherwise, you're just moving your arm for nothing. And then what we'll do once our batter is mixed is go ahead and transfer that into a paper lined muffin tin. Sorry, I mean cupcake tin. And my personal strategy for this is to fill them all up just to the top, and then going around with the extra, adding a little bit to the top of each one. And of course, because everybody's bananas are a little bit differently sized, you may have a little more than this, or you may have a little less than this. But the point is, get them as even as you can, so they cook uniformly. And that's it. Once those have been filled, we'll give them the old tapa tapa. At which point, they're ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so, or until the tops are lightly browned and our batters cooked through. And normally for something like this, we could test with a toothpick, unless what you're cooking has giant chunks of molten chocolate inside, in which case it is much harder to tell. But I could tell these were done, thanks to experience and instincts. But if you want to try poking in a few different spots, go ahead. And then, very important, we want to let these cool down completely before we frost them, which is going to give us plenty of time to make our dark chocolate ganache. 
which I think is the best and easiest frosting ever. And to make it, all we need to do is pour some very hot cream over some chocolate chips. As in cream, we heat it up until it was almost ready to simmer. And what we do is pour that over and let it sit for a couple minutes, at which point we simply stir it all together. And fair warning, when we first start whisking, it does not look good. In fact, it looks bad, real bad. But then about 45 seconds in, something magical happens, as this turns into a beautifully glossy, luscious looking chocolate sauce. So even though you're gonna be nervous halfway through and think you did something wrong, you didn't. Just keep stirring and it will eventually turn into this. And then at this point, all we have to do is let this cool down until it's as thick as we want. All right, fully cooled, this has the texture of like a fudge or the inside of a truffle, but generally we wanna apply it when it's much thinner. And if it's still relatively thin, you could just dip in your tops to get a thin coating, which I attempted to show you here, but it had thickened up too much. So I just switched to a spoon and started spreading it over like regular frosting. And after doing a couple like that, I remembered a spoon is not a great frosting tool because that bottom is rounded. So I did switch to the correct tool, which would be some sort of thin flat spatula, or even just a butter knife would work better than the spoon. But anyway, one way or another, we're gonna frost those tops. And then I decided to garnish the tops of mine with some candied banana chips, since it kind of looks like a slice of fresh banana. But unlike a slice of banana, will not discolor and turn brown and look really, really bad after a few hours. And yes, for extra credit, if you want, you could roll those edges and finely chop walnuts. And that's it. Once garnished, our Chunky Monkey cupcakes are ready to enjoy. And by the way, it's generally not a bad idea to refrigerate these for a little bit so that frosting kind of firms up. But I didn't do that and went right in for a taste. And what a taste it was. All right, banana bread is one of my favorite things of all time. And I love just a plain one. But when you combine an extra rich moist banana bread with tons of chopped walnuts and chunks of chocolate, frosted with our beautiful dark chocolate ganache. We are talking about something very special indeed. And yes, I really did make these extremely chunky. All right, if you want, you can be less generous with the nuts and chocolate. But here, I really did want them to live up to their name. And of course, if you did want something slightly less decadent, you could just skip the chocolate frosting and call them Chunky Monkey Muffins. Although, good luck getting that banana chip to stick on. But either way, whether you end up stuffing muffins or crushing cupcakes, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>